Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Crypto Ginger here. Just wanted to take a quick moment make another video for you guys to go over yet again more news that's happening in the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. It is ever evolving, guys, and it always seems like there's an abundant amount of information whether you miss it or not. You just kind of have to keep your eyes and ears out for what you like. And whether good or bad, it definitely is a sure sign that this entire cryptocurrency ecosystem is most certainly evolving and growing. And I will say that I also think a lot of news is possibly writing the coattails of uh, the news about Backed launching on the 23rd of this month. So be on the lookout for obviously a lot more news circulating around cryptocurrency, blockchain, distributed ledger technology, partnerships, what have you. But most certainly uh, it's going to ramp up here pretty soon. And then, of course, after backed launches, my guess is that Fidelity might be one of the next type of entities out there to launch as well. So it's going to ramp up for sure. Uh, I would imagine quarter four of this year is going to be very, very interesting. And of course, speaking of interesting, we have an article here from Coindesk.com where we see that Vanek Solidex withdraws Bitcoin ETF proposal from SEC review. Now, of course, this isn't the first rodeo for them when it comes to withdrawing from these proposals, but... The timing of this is very interesting because didn't we just get a couple weeks ago that Van Eyck was actually doing some form of an ETF, which then come to find out it was basically no different than a trust. And so now they have institutional buyers buying into this particular trust under this rule 144A exemption. So I'm wondering if the simple fact that they actually are withdrawing from their Van Eyck ETF it, it really has anything to do with the fact that they're actually making money right now from this particular trust, these shares they have from these institutional buyers. So I'm not sure, guys. It's just very interesting when it comes to, again, the timing of everything. And, of course, uh, this isn't to say that an ETF isn't something that is you know going to stop being proposed to the SEC. Uh, of course, uh, this also not to say that an ETF won't ever come into existence. This is just simply letting you know that Vanek Solidex is actually doing another withdrawal for these Bitcoin ETF proposals. And again, I'm just personally relating it to what was already in the article, the fact that they were making money from their Vanek Solidex shares of trust. Again, they were primarily dealing with institutional buyers, which if you look here in the bracket, it says entities with at least $100 million in assets owned or invested. I mean, that right there is a sure sign they're making something from this particular investment strategy they have going on. So I'm not sure that they're hurting so bad for an ETF necessarily. I think they found that loophole they were looking for and it possibly, you know, pacified what they're needing until they get some firm regulation from the SEC. So you have to let me know what you think about that information. Just very interesting, again, the timing. So uh, a couple of things I want to quickly go over as well. Now, in my last video, I talked about a rumor that's been circulating on Twitter regarding a possible partnership between Coinbase and Ripple that all started from an example explaining how XRapid would work, and this all took place at a recent global blockchain event. Now, of course, my suggestion to you guys is to go watch that video that explains that information there. Again, this is my last video. I didn't want to make it too redundant with this video. Um, but keep in mind, guys, it is a rumor at this point in time. I haven't seen anything that made it absolutely concrete and official. It was just something that, uh, with a lot of information put together, again, it was based on rumor. However, what is not rumor and it comes to Coinbase is something I found very intriguing, and it just so happens to be with the CFTC. As a matter of fact, on their direct page, you can see here that Dorothy DeWitt to lead CFTC's Division of Market Oversight. Now, of course, we all know who the CFTC is. That is the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And, of course, who is Dorothy? Well, it looks like... Miss DeWitt here will join CFTC from Coinbase, a cryptocurrency company where she serves as vice president and general counsel for business lines and markets. She previously served as senior legal and compliance roles for Citadel Securities, a broker dealer and swap dealer 
provisionally registered with the CFTC and S&P Global as an attorney for Davis Polk and Wardwell. So the most important takeaway from this, guys, is the fact that she's leaving Coinbase to go to CFTC. So, of course, a quick look at Miss DeWitt. Now, looking her up on Twitter, this is the page that I found her on. Of course, I wanted to kind of identify whether or not this is her page. She did put a link in here. Now, I can only guess that maybe anybody can open up an account on Twitter and post anybody's LinkedIn information in here. But this definitely shows that this is Dorothy DeWitt, uh, VP General Counsel, Business Lines and Marketing at Coinbase. So she is at least expressing here that she worked at Coinbase and also went to Harvard Law School. So guys, we can easily see here that you know we have some reference of who Dorothy DeWitt is. And it's just, again, interesting that she's leaving Coinbase to go to the CFTC. Could she actually influence the decision-making that's happening there with the CFTC just because of her experience working at Coinbase and cryptocurrencies? I mean, I would definitely hope so. Uh, I just find it very interesting, again, the timing of everything that's taking place here. And now we have uh, somebody that worked for Coinbase moving to the CFTC. So you have to let me know what you think about this information, guys. One last thing I want to quickly go over as well. And finally, this last article here I found very intriguing when it comes to what we do know about countries that are actually suffering right now uh, because of their economy or because of their fiat system, their currency is either going through inflation or hyperinflation. There are definitely countries dealing with that right now. And of course, we also have the talk of uh, a possible upcoming recession on a global scale. So something to keep in consideration when it comes to what we do know about cryptocurrencies in this ecosystem. And this article here is just kind of lending to that understanding that cryptocurrencies could be a possible safe haven for those who are early adopters and early investors of this particular, uh, you know, different type of digital asset class here. And of course, what we have in this article from News BTC is the talk of Huobi Group opening up a crypto exchange in crisis-stricken Argentina where Bitcoin is at its all-time high. That's something to keep in consideration, guys, because those countries, again, they're dealing with inflation and hyperinflation. They need a way for them to actually reserve some of their wealth, if they have any at all. And what better way to do that than cryptocurrencies, uh, digital assets, things of that nature there. And again, seeing that Bitcoin is at its all-time high in these areas, I would imagine that could absolutely benefit a lot of people there. Now, according to this article here, what we can see is that Wobi Group, the operators of one of the world's largest crypto asset trading venues, has announced that it will launch a digital currency exchange in Argentina. The new platform is expected to go live in mid-October. Further, it states that, according to an article published today by Reuters, the Wobi Group has plans to launch a branch of its crypto asset exchange in Argentina. The exchange will allow users to deposit the local currency, the peso, and exchange it for Bitcoin and a host of other digital assets. So you can see again, they're going to be taking the peso and allowing these people to accrue and collect Bitcoin. So with Bitcoin jumping up in price, whatever they put in before uh, is going to have more value than that peso. And if the peso is dealing with inflation or even hyperinflation, you can see how that offset there uh, would mean that holding the peso means you're losing value versus having put it into Bitcoin because of the Wobi Group exchange and allowing it to accrue value. So guys, this is absolutely huge. Again, this right here could be something that helps the catalyst of the price of Bitcoin jump up. And if other countries have this same type of situation happen where an exchange opens up in their impoverished areas there to allow for onboarding of their currency for Bitcoin, that would absolutely be huge for this entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. So again, something to take in consideration, guys. I apologize for the lengthiness of this video, but uh, there is a lot happening in th this development stage that's taking place for the cryptocurrency ecosystem is ever evolving. And I would imagine it's going to continue to do so until we see something completely 100% solidified with the entire cryptocurrency 
uh, model, the way it's designed. Maybe at that point in time, it's just going to blossom to something even more brand new. So who knows, guys? The sky's the limit, I would imagine, for everything that we're dealing with with this entire ecosystem. But let me know what you guys think, guys. And of course, if I've missed some news that you want to hear about, please leave it in the comment section. I love hearing dialogue from you guys just as well. Outside of that, thanks again for watching. Please follow me on Coil and on Twitter. And of course, if you are new to this channel, please hit the like and subscribe button and that notification bell just as well. Outside of that, have a good day. Bye-bye.